Well, good morning. Man, a great, great job, praise band. So, man, that was wonderful. So, hey, it's a 4th of July weekend, and so, man, what a, what a weekend to celebrate. And so thank you all for being here and not at the lake and all the other things people do on 4th of July. But, man, I'm so uh, thankful to live uh, in a country where we can still worship here uh, freely on Sundays. And so uh, one of the neat things about our church is every time it's 4th of July, it's also our anniversary. And so, uh, man, today is actually the two-year anniversary of Sequoia Creek Church. And so, yeah, we're excited about that. So the smattering of applause. I know you're happier than that uh, in your hearts. Okay. And so uh, wake up. But uh, no, and, and so I'm not normally... I'm not normally a statistics guy, but uh, I've got some stats for you this morning about, about some different uh, things. And so uh, there's a, a recent LifeWay study that uh, got put out that, that talks about just the overall uh, direction of church attendance. And so uh, in, in the year 2000, that's 23 years ago if you're keeping track, but in the year uh, 2000, the median church attendance in uh, the United States was 137, okay? And so if you don't remember back to math class what a median is, it's not the same thing as the average church attendance, okay? And so that means that if you took half of the churches in the year 2000 and just and said, all right, we cut them off here, it, that means half of them are 137 and less, and half of them are 137 and more, Okay. And so, uh, it's a, like I said, it's a different, but it's a good statistic for what we're going to be talking about. And so now, the statistic is the median church attendance uh, in America is now dropped to 65. 65. And so, and we go, oof, wow, what happened? What happened? And so, that, that means now that, it's the same thing, it's just half the churches in the United States are 65 and less, and half are 65 and more. And the reason that that median number is different than average is, is the average church attendance hasn't dropped near that much. It has gone down. But, but what's happening is more and more people are starting to go to larger churches. And, and so that's, a, that's a kind of a, a very well-known thing as far as like statistics and things. The, the larger a church is, the more likely it is to be growing right now. And, and the opposite is also true. And, and most smaller churches are actually um, averaging a decline of 5% or, or more. And so I think that's a, a, an interesting uh, statistic. But uh, uh, with that, I think it's just good to be aware of, uh, of things like that. And, and let me just encourage y'all church that in the middle of all of that, we have gone against that trend. And, and so, uh, man, we're so thankful that uh, we've been growing through everything and that, uh, you know, the pandemic didn't, like, kill us or anything. And, and yet we've still been growing. We've still been seeing people come to know the Lord. And, and so we're, we're really excited about that. But the reason, I think, is, uh, is more important of why more and more people are going to larger churches. And, and so with that, uh, you, you imagine if you're a, a young family, who want your kids to just love the Lord and love church, then you're going to choose a church that has some established programs, you know? And, and, and so the larger a church is, that means the more, the more programs you're able to do, the more uh, uh, staffing you have, the, the more people you have to put on different things like that, the more finances you have to back some of those things. And, and so, again, I'm, I'm so, so thankful that we've been able to go against that trend. But man, I think one of the big, big reasons we have been able to is because of our children's program. And, and so we have an absolutely incredible children's program here. And that's, that's a, a rarity amongst churches that are our size. And, and so uh, with that, I, I, wanna, I just want to say, first of all, to the church as a whole, Good job. <laughs> good job. It's been two years and, and still, and we're on the rise. Things are looking uh, good uh, numbers-wise and things like that. That's, ex that's, of course, exciting. That's exciting. But, but, uh, but man, I, I do want to say some thanks uh, to everyone involved. And so, first off, like anyone who gives a speech ever, I want to thank God, okay? Uh, but, uh, but really, I'm so thankful for God and everything that he's done, um, but uh, I also want to thank all the people who went to Faith Baptist Church 
And, and all, all the people who said, you know, hey, we, we need to do something drastically different, who, who cared so much about the gospel and about uh, just the Lord and his plan for our life that, that uh, man, y'all who were there at faith just knew, like, man, we're willing. We're willing to do something drastically different, go through all types of crazy change. And so I, I, I'm truly so thankful for your just Christ-like humility to go through some of those huge changes that, uh, that we've done in order to reach the community in this generation with the gospel. That's a huge thing. And, and unfortunately, that's the piece that most churches that are dying don't have is that, uh, that humility to say, hey, uh, no, we, we recognize what we're doing isn't working. And so that's awesome. That's a, an awesome characteristic of, of some of the, the just saints that we've had here at this location long before I ever showed up. And so, uh, I, I, I mean, and we have so many volunteers. We have staff members and all of y'all who just pour blood, sweat, and tears. Y'all, thank you. Thank you. But again, special focus on our children's ministry volunteers. And so, man, we've got our uh, assistant children's minister, Bethany um, uh, Westfall. And so she's not able to be here this morning, but man, so thankful for her. She does a lot of the operational stuff. And then our children's minister is here in the room today, Anna McBride. And so, yeah. Anna, do you want to, you want to stand up? No, she doesn't. Okay. I won't make you. I don't want, so I don't want to lose her on the day that I, I say thank you. And so, but no, we're so thankful for just the, the direction that, that she's given to our children's ministry. And, you know, and we pay Anna peanuts. Okay. And uh, that's, uh, almost enough to buy peanuts anyway. But uh, so, so thankful that uh, she's able to do that because that's, that's such a, a huge thing. And so, man, if you, if you volunteer in the children's ministry, thank you. I know lots of them are volunteering right now, and so make sure you all thank them as well. But again, that's such, a, such an important thing, and it's such important work that we're doing, pouring into the next generation. And one of the things that's just is, is very welcoming to uh, new families who are looking for a church because they're not going to go somewhere that doesn't have uh, a place that's really going to focus on their kids. So thank you. Thank you all. And uh, man, I'm so excited about what's happening, where we're going. And so yeah, let's get into the scripture this morning. So if you've got your Bible, go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And, and so we started a series a couple weeks ago called Out of the Oasis and Into the World. This is not part of that series, okay? We're going we're gonna to be back to that in, in a couple weeks and probably just add some of those in uh, just as we go. And so as I was praying about uh, what to preach here on our two-year anniversary as a, as a church, this passage came to mind, and, and I thought it would just be really good to refocus on just our job our job as, uh, as Christians. And, and so our, our title today is The Job of the Saints. Okay? The Job of the Saints. And, and just so we're all on the same page, that word saints, uh, it, it, it's different uh, when you talk about um, other denominations. Some people view that word differently than we do. And so when we say that word saints, um, what we mean is Christians. Okay, God's people, followers of Jesus. If, you're, if you've made Jesus your Lord, you are a saint. You don't have to be dead to be a saint. You didn't have to have someone uh, uh, come by after the fact and, and, and knight you in sainthood or anything like that. It's like, no, we can use the context of Scripture, even in our passage to hear, to realize, no, the, the saints are uh, people who are also alive and, and, and well, Christians. Okay, And so we're, we're going to see that, but we're going to talk about that job. And so if that's you today... If you didn't know that you're a saint, hey, I'm glad that you are, okay? And if you're not, I want you to be. And so we'll pray for you as well. But here we are, Ephesians 4, I'm going to start in verse 11. It says this, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. All right, so 
Paul says in, in, in verse 11, he's, he's, the context, he's talking about all of these things associated with, with now that uh, Jesus has ascended on high. And so he says, now that Jesus has ascended on high, he gave some believers specific gifts um, and, and to, to equip the saints. And so he lists those at the beginning of our passage. But back in verse 7, he, he makes sure that we all know that all of the saints have been given some measure of God's grace, some, some gifts from the Lord when we become Christians. And so verse 7 says, grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And so we know that. We know that all of God's people have been given, been given gifts in different measures. But, but here's how I want to just walk through this passage this morning. And so we've got a sentence we're going to put up that's just got, uh, it just summarizes our, our passage for us, verses 11 through 14, and, and we're going to just kind of break this down as we're talking. And so here, here's that sentence. It says this, it says, God has given church leadership, so we talked about those people, the apostles, prophets, teachers, all those people, the task of equipping the saints for ministry until they reach maturity with the purpose of building up the body of Christ. Okay, and so so I don't think that in that there's going to be something that's just mind blowing in that sentence, right? I I think it's also really important sometimes as a church just to to break down our job as saints on on the most basic level to make sure we don't lose sight of what God's mission is for us, you know, because because lots of times we can get get really excited about doing extra things when what we really need to do is get back to basics and do the main things that God has got for us. You know, and, and so, so here's, here's these things. That, that sentence, again, God has given church leadership the task of equipping the saints for ministry until they reach maturity with the purpose of building up the body of Christ. So we, we kind of talked about how there's, there's a lot of uh, small churches out there, lots of big churches out there. And, and by the way, we're, we're actually now hovering around what, what like, Lifeway would consider a mid-sized church, which is a, a church from 100 to 250. And so we go, well, well, praise God. again, And, and that's against all the trends and things like that. And that's, I think, by, only by God's grace. But, but there's, there's lots of small churches that are really good churches. And, and, and there's some that we go, okay, maybe not so much. And there's lots of large churches that are really good churches. And then some where we go, I, okay, well, you know, hey, if Christ is proclaimed, then we rejoice. And so uh, regardless of our size, we want to make sure that we have the basics uh, because, because even in our personal lives, sometimes we'll do the same thing. People will want to jump to all these uh, extra, you know, specific things that they want to do. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like if someone's playing basketball and they want to learn how to do some type of like 360 fadeaway dunk, which isn't a thing. Okay, and so, so uh, by definition, it's really hard to fade away and dunk. I guess it's possible, but, but we go, okay, no, let's, let's make sure we can dribble first, right? Let, let's make sure that we've got all the basics down before we try to do anything extra. And so we're going to kind of just break this down at, at, a, at a basic level, saying, man, what is the church supposed to do? And, and once we have all of those things in place, then you can start talking about extra stuff. So here's number one. Here's number one. It's be equipped for ministry. Be equipped for ministry. Verse 11 says, and he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And so, so the job of those, those leaders, again, the evangelists, shepherds, teachers, their job is to equip the saints, which in turn means it's the job of the saints to be equipped. That, that's for all of us. This, this passage makes it so clear that all of God's children's are, 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 are children's are supposed to be ministers. All of us are supposed to minister to people, and, and so this is a job that God expects of all of us is to be equipped for ministry. There is not a version of Christianity where God does not want the Christian to minister to the needs of other people. Okay, and 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 there's not a version of church, of real church, where, where when we come in, the goal isn't to be equipped. Okay, If we come in and we sit down and all we want to do is just hear something new or, or something theological that we might not have known before, if that's our goal, then we've missed it. 
or the goal of coming in here is for life change. The goal for coming in here is to respond to the word, not just to be hearers only. And so there's a lot of church models out there uh, that I think aren't really focused on equipping people for ministry. And, and that's on them. Again, if Christ is proclaimed, we rejoice. Uh, and, and, and maybe what that might look like is a, a church that only gives instruction on, on personal holiness or a, a church that only gives instruction on how to live more wisely, give you all the don'ts uh, of, of what to do in the world. And we say, man, that stuff's kind of extra. Because we've got to be equipped for ministry. If we're not loving people the, the way Christ tells us to love people, then what we're doing is just like pointless as a church. Right? Without love, then we're just a clanging gong is what the scripture says. And so if we're not actually ministering to the needs of others, then, and, and we're just here for self-help, you know what we look like is the Pharisees we read about in scripture. These guys have all this knowledge in the world and we go, whew, whew, careful. I, I, let, let that never be us. And, and, and you might have heard me say it before, but sanctification, that, that process where God makes us holy and, and sets us apart, that process of, of sanctification happens in the middle of ministry. And, and so sometimes if we go, man, I just feel like I'm not growing in my faith, and the, then get to work. Get off your bum bum and go do some ministry. You know, and so it's, uh, it's such an important thing. But that ministry, that's like miracle grow for our Christian walk. But, but don't be surprised if you're not growing, if you're just, if, if your Christian walk involves coming in and sitting on a pew, and then we'll see you again next week. Okay, that's not what it's for. God's not going to grow you if that's all you're doing. And so, uh, again, are, are you just, are you equipped for ministry? So, it's such a simple question, but I hope we can really really ponder that. So let's look at the sentence again. God has given church leadership the task of equipping the saints for ministry until they reach maturity with the purpose of building up the body of Christ. And so the the first part we looked at there was just, hey, our, our job in that as the saints is to be equipped for ministry. Number two is this, reach maturity. Reach maturity. And so in our passage here, it, it talks a lot about maturity. And there's, there's three verses here we're going to uh, read that, that are, this is going to be our longest point, but verse 13, and so it's talking about equipping the saints until, verse 13, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. All right, so verse 13, it, it, it tells us when we can stop equipping the saints. Okay? It says, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Okay? So, so Paul's telling us here where, where maturity starts, it's when we are unified in two things. And you can see them there, unified both in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus. Okay? He says that's where we need to be unified, church, in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus. I've, I've talked before how, how in, in, in Christian at Christian circles, I've always find myself surprised by the people that I become really good friends with. You know, uh, the, the, I shared a story one time where uh, I was at a, a friend's house and uh, our sons were playing together. There's a lot of dads there because the, the wives were gone. And we didn't know what to do or how to parent. And so one of the guy's sons came in and started vacuuming with a Nerf gun. And so I said, hey, let me show you how to use that gun. And he said, no, no, just let it be a vacuum. And I remember, I remember standing there just thinking, we are united in Christ. You know, we are very different people, but we are united in Christ. And, and, and all, all the time, you know, I find myself just like, man, isn't that the most important thing? 
that we can be united in our faith in the knowledge of Christ. And, and there's so many different things that we can disagree on, whether that's a po- political stuff or, or even tertiary doctrines. What he says is to be united herein is in our faith and our knowledge of Christ. And so mature believers are, are united in that. We're, we're, we have faith that while we were still sinners, God sent his son Jesus to live a sinless life and, and die on a cross as a substitute for those sins. We, we have faith in that. We are unified in the knowledge that, that our sin separates us from God. But if we simply believe in Jesus, it's that faith that saves us. And that's the only thing that saves us from an eternity spent away from God. And we know Jesus didn't stay dead, but on the third day he rose again. And now he has ascended on high. And one day he's coming back for the church. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. And so, one day he's coming back for the church, okay? And can I get a name? All right, there we go. Yeah, so, man, we're, we're unified in that. And there's so many other things in the Scripture what, that people want to uh, argue about and stuff, but who cares? Like, that's all. If it's tertiary, I don't care. But let's talk about Christ and Christ crucified and, and how, how he died on the cross to save us from our sins. We're unified in that. And then, hey, let's go minister and love people. It's pretty, pretty basic. Like we said before, you know, we think about all the differences between denominations and stuff, and, and, and I've even heard from the pulpit, people just, entire sermons, knocking on other denominations or, or making fun of other uh, people who don't believe this way about Christianity. If Christ is proclaimed, man, we rejoice. And so, man, we've got too much stuff to do, too many lost people to talk to, to be able to fight about all that stupid stuff. And that's like the first sign of someone who's in a, a mature believer is someone who's able to just be unified regardless of that nonsense. When people start talking about all that stupid stuff that they fight about, that's not, that's not maturity. If you can make someone's idea look stupid, that's not maturity. Maturity is going, hey, okay, we'll be unified even if we're not agreeing on everything. That's maturity. That's where it starts And so he said, verse 13, he says, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Reading on. To mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And so as he continues talking about he says, the mature Christian learns to use Jesus as the measurement. Jesus as the standard of what we measure ourselves to. And so I, I can think of, of different people I've counseled or different times I've corrected children. You think about a, a, a child and it's like, hey, be nice to them. It's like, well, I'm not going to be nice to them. They're not nice to me. Or, or, and we see all of a sudden they're, they're measuring themselves against someone else. And we go, oh, well, adults would never do that. I'll be nice to my wife when she starts showing me respect. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so the measurement, it isn't people. We don't say, hey, at least I'm not like Billy Bob over here smoking crack. Like, it's really easy to make ourselves seem better than we are, to make ourselves seem holy if we compare ourselves to other people. But when we learn to actually measure ourselves against the standard of Jesus, that's when we go, oof. And when we do that, all of a sudden, there, there comes a humility with that. Now, now that I'm measuring myself to Jesus, all of a sudden, that kind of puts me in my place. You know, it, it, uh, bringing basketball into it. If I'm playing against Michael Jordan, who's better than LeBron James, if I'm playing against him, then and, and all of a sudden, what's going to happen is I'm going to get put back into my place. If I think I'm the best basketball player ever, and then I go play against someone who actually is the best basketball player ever, now I go, you know what? I think I need to just go sit on the bench over here. And, and, and be humble. And so if I'm trying to measure my holiness against other people, who cares about the little league? Let's talk about Jesus. And then we go, you know what? I think the first step of maturity is just realizing that I'm not holy. God's holy. And, and, and when we have that as our mentality, when we have that as, as the driving force behind the ministry that we all need to be equipped to do, now it's really easy not to judge people. And then when people come in here needing a Savior, when people come in here needing some type of help, some type of need met, then we're ready. And we say, because I'm not better than them. I can love them because Christ first loved me. Man, what a, 
What an awesome thing, but man, it's so hard to, to do that because our flesh tells us to do the opposite over and over. Our, in our flesh, we always want to compare ourselves to other people because that's the only way we're going to feel good about ourselves. And yet we come in here, I love the song choice this morning. Brokenness is all I bring. And then, then, then the next song is we're saying, hey, I can raise a hallelujah, but that's about all I've got. <laughs> because I don't have anything that, that, that Jesus needs for me. But verse 14 it, it, it tells us why, because we, we know we're supposed to measure ourselves to the, the stature of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14 says, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. And, and so when, when we mature to the point of, of being unified in our faith and in the knowledge of Jesus... And, and, and by the way, the more knowledge we have of Jesus, the easier it is to use him as the measuring stick. Right? When, when, when we re- truly know who Jesus is, that's when we can look at our life and go, ooh, oh yeah, I remember when Jesus was kind in this situation. Or I remember when he said, turn the other cheek or, or whatever it might be. But, but when, we're, when we're mature to this point of being unified in the faith and the knowledge of Jesus, Paul says, now... You have solid ground to stand on. Your, your life isn't going to be these chaotic waves of nonsense that blow you all over the place. You're going to be grounded on Christ. You're going to have protection, protection from false doctrine. You're going to have protection from human cunning, right? even the deceitful schemes that are just like way outside of any of our leagues. If we're just mature in the faith, then he says, you don't have to worry about that. You're, you're founded and, and grounded in Christ. Then verse 15 says, rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Anybody ever have a hard time speaking the truth in love? Sorry, this was, this meant crowd response. Anyone have, okay, thanks. The front row, y'all are good. Okay, so uh, man, what a, what an easy thing to miss out on here. But if you want to talk about a sign of spiritual maturity, it's having the discipline to speak truth to people, not out of pride, not not so you can be right, not so you can prove them wrong, but in a way that makes less of ourselves in order to help them. Speaking the truth in love is what we're called to do, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. And, and, and before we move on to number three, let me just say, if you do consider yourself spiritually mature, that, that, meaning that you're equipped for ministry and then all these things we just talked about, uh, one of the things you're supposed to be doing is equipping other people for ministry. Are you? <laughs> So, so number one is we're to be equipped for ministry. Number two, we're to reach maturity. Here's our sentence one more time. God has given church leadership the task of equipping the saints for ministry until they reach maturity with the purpose of building up the body of Christ. So here's number three. Help build the body. Help build the body. And, and so a, a, as we see in, in the passage here, like that's part of the job of the saints is to help build the body of Christ. And it tells us how to do that. So I'm going to back up to verse 15. It's in a flow right into 16. It says, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And so throughout the New Testament, the church, okay, and when we, again, when we say the church, it's the people, not the building. And so throughout the New Testament, the church is often referred to as the body of Christ, And so now that Jesus has ascended into heaven, Jesus is the head, and we, the church, are are the body of him. We are Jesus' body that's supposed to take his love in action out to the world. We we see that in this illustration, in this visual picture of this body of Christ. And so what it says here is that when we all do our jobs as the saints, the body grows and it builds itself up. 
Okay? And, and, and with this, it's a really neat picture because we see w- with that illustration, the body where, where we're all unified, like we talked about, working as one body, but uh, as one body, we're also individual members of that body. And so you might be a knee. You might be a toe. I, I don't know what everyone's part is in that body. And, and so all of us have individual, member, or individual jobs in that church. Not everyone has the same job within the body of Christ. But when we all work together, the body builds itself up. Verse 15, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up into every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And, and, and so we go, man, that's, that's important. That's a really important thing to do. What, what is my ministry? What, what am I supposed to be doing in the body? What, 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 what am I supposed to be doing that's going to help the body to grow? And, and y'all, so, much, so often that stuff is just selfless, selfless service that no one's ever going to see. But the more people that, that, that can do that, who can truly just humble themselves and say, you know what, I'm just going to, it doesn't matter if anyone sees this. Why? Because hopefully of maturity and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for the sake of the church because it's through the church that, that Christ shares his love with the world and there is no version of Christianity that gets away from that. A lot of people try to do church uh, at home. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe you're sitting there and you're, you're at home by yourself and you're a knee. Well, a knee by itself doesn't do squat. You know, if you're, if you're, a, if you're a toe and you're sitting in your, at your home watching church online and you don't ever go be part of a body, a toe can't move by itself. I don't know if you knew that. It, there's other things involved in whatever body part you might be, okay? And, and so it, it's such an important thing that we recognize, like, no, we're all part of something much bigger, and just because we might be part of a smaller church doesn't mean that God's, God's job and task for our church is any less significant because that's not the case. But because each church is reaching individual souls who God loves desperately, and each church is equipped to uniquely reach specific people, that, that, that all, that God, remember, God desires to save all people. And so please don't think that our task is any less important just because we're not one of those huge churches. But recognize that it's also our jobs as the saints to do whatever function it is that we do in the body in order that the body of Christ might be built up. So we're, we're uh, about to close. And, and, and so uh, just some of those questions just ponder on here, man, am I equipped for ministry? Have I, am I growing to maturity? Am, am I equipping others for ministry? Am I building up the body? Maybe it's something as simple as like, man, when's the last time I invited someone to church? But we've kind of broken down this passage. And so like always, we want to, we want to respond to the word of God. And so I'm going to read this passage one more time. And, and what I'd ask is just that as I'm reading, you prayerfully consider it's like, man, how is it that God wants you to respond to the word today? Okay, so here it is. Verse 11. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Let me pray for us. Dear Lord, we just thank you for your word. And, and, and we all pray that you just show us what it is that you'd have us take away from that. And, and, and Lord, I, I pray that you just help our, our body to grow, help us to know which parts need to be where 
Help, help us to, to equip people for the work of ministry, not to just have a couple all-star ministers or anything like that, but Lord, that people are just truly equipped to uh, reach the world with the gospel. Lord, we love you so much, and we just ask humbly for uh, your blessing on our church. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.